So it's been four months since I started using the OnePlus 11 and well, feel free to call me crazy, but this actually became one of my favorite recent phones pretty quickly. When it comes to OnePlus, this is more like it. Unfortunately, as time goes on, this will continue to be an overlooked and underrated phone, but not for me. Let me tell you why. One of the most common lines I see from the community is, OnePlus peaked with the insert phone here. It's usually the 7 Pro, the 8 Pro, sometimes even the 6T. Whether it's about the design, the hefty price increases, the head scratching emission of certain features, or most notably, the complete gear shift of Oxygen OS. There's been a steady list of reasons why a lot of people considered the company to have fallen off. OnePlus isn't the same. Yeah, there is truth to that, and the flagship killer badge hasn't been around for a while. But that begs the question, does that automatically mean that OnePlus phones aren't good anymore and haven't been since those phones? To me, the answer to that is no. Leading up to the 11's release, I went back to revisit the 10 Pro, and I admittedly gained a newfound liking to the phone. Not that I disliked it or anything, but I ended up enjoying it significantly more than I had before. A big reason for that was I was warming up to, and perhaps even liking, this Oxygen Color OS skin thingy on top of Android, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Aside from some gripes I had with the cameras, using this phone after, you know, not using it for months, and after upgrading it to Oxygen OS 13, I found that it not only seemed to breathe new life into the phone, but it had me really looking forward to 2023's release. So here's the OnePlus 11, announced back in January. No pro variant to speak of, just one simple model starting at $699. A far cry from the $900 the 10 Pro started at, and especially the near $1100 the 9 Pro started at. This kind of reminds me of the Pixel 5, and while the reasons behind the two releases are probably different, either way, to me, this strategy worked out as sort of a reset button type move, keeping it simple playing it safe. The 11 hangs on to a couple things from phones in the past. It's built quite similarly to the 9 Pro and the 10 Pro, which I don't mind. And you know that I prefer flat displays, but the best thing about curved displays is that it makes a large phone more narrow and easier to hang on to. One thing I really, really wish was still around is the frosted glass from the 8 Pro and the 7 Pro. The gloss just ain't it for me. It does look nice though. This green color is pretty slick too. I do like the stealthy black variant, but it's got that same texture that we got on the 10 Pro. It's nice and all, but my goodness, this is undoubtedly the slipperiest phone I've ever used. And that is not an exaggeration. Nonetheless, it's a premium feeling glass and polished aluminum phone and it's quite comfortable to use. The haptics are nice and high quality. I think the software does a good job of utilizing the feedback. The speakers are fine. They get the job done, but they're well behind at the competition and could use some improvement, especially on the low end. The alert slider is here, thank goodness, and the button placement gets a thumbs up from me. Now what gets a thumbs down though, is the lack of an IP68 rating for dust and water resistance. Now this isn't anything new for OnePlus phones, and it's nice to now have an official rating this time around, but bruh, IP64 is what we're stuck with, which is only good for dust and water splashes, not submersion. Yeah. Just wanted to take a quick sec to thank the sponsor of today's video, Sound Dynamic. This is their Vibe Bluetooth speaker. It sounds great and it lights up. It's got a button that lets you swap it between different light modes and there's an app where you can customize things like the lighting, you can tweak the audio with customizable sound profiles, there's a built-in sleep timer, and there's a white noise mode to help you relax. Hitting this button here lets you pair another Vibe speaker to create a stereo setup, which works really well. Go ahead and grab one using the links below in the description. Use this code to get $10 off on their website, and you can get 30% off the speaker on Amazon. Thanks again to Sound Dynamic for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. Now, about this camera module. Yeah, it's, uh, it's huge. I actually don't mind it at all, really. Never did, and I don't now. Uh, but I get how a lot of people may not like it. I've seen feedback saying how it looks bad, it looks weird, it should be centered, and some don't even like how the glass curves up to the edge of the module. But in my opinion, when you have the device and you're using it, 
it's not really an issue, especially as time moves on. The display is very nice to look at and use. It's high res, it's crisp, colorful, and super smooth at 120 hertz. It is an LTPO panel that allows for a variable refresh rate, but with how it's handled here, certain applications run at a lower frame rate, like Instagram, YouTube, and others. It's pretty jarring, but I found this app that basically lets you force 120 hertz, so problem solved. It's just that, to me, this shouldn't be a thing, and it's been a thing for years with these phones. Oh well. The in-display optical fingerprint scanner works well. Uh, it's very quick and rarely does it miss the mark. The phone also has a very basic 2D facial recognition. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Let's talk Oxygen OS. No, it's not the same as it once was. It does give these phones an entirely different look and feel, so I completely understand the distaste from OnePlus fans, or I guess I should say former OnePlus fans, but as I stated earlier, personally, I've warmed up to it and I'm cool with it now. I will own up to the fact that I was not a fan of the Color OS merge at first and we saw that Oxygen OS was already moving in a not so favorable direction before that around the time of the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro, so this big of a pivot could be looked at as inevitable. Enter Android 13 and Oxygen OS 13, which essentially leans into and embraces Color OS even more. While there is a decent amount to like here, there are a couple of things that aren't my cup of tea. The home screen is clean, I like the baked in feature for larger folders, it's pretty handy, I like how the grid handles widget sizes too. There are some solid feature, feature, features, what the heck's a feature? <laughs> There are some solid features sprinkled throughout the OS, like the ability to customize the feel of the haptics, which is nice. Uh, there's flexible windows, a One UI style sidebar for shortcuts. There's a quick launch feature where you can set certain functions and apps to be instantly accessible when you unlock the phone with your fingerprint, which is pretty useful actually. There are some thoughtful modes like a dedicated kid space, there's a simple mode, and a work-life balance mode too. It's not One UI level of features, but there are a good amount of tweaks that help you create the user experience that you want. Again, yes, it's essentially Color OS at this point, and I feel for the fans that hopped onto the OnePlus bandwagon because of what Oxygen OS used to be. Personally, after some time, I was able to push past the sadness and appreciate the current state of the OS skin for what it is. Now, a huge plus is the long-term update commitment. The OnePlus 11 is slated to get four years of OS updates and five years of security patches every other month. Honestly, the gripes that I have are fairly minor and could easily be considered nitpicking. I'm just not a huge fan of some of these UI interaction elements, and I was hoping these things would be fixed over time. Unfortunately, four months later, we're still here. Like, I can't swipe down to expand notifications. I can't even do it with two fingers. I have to tap this little arrow or the very top of the notification itself. And in certain areas, you have to be a little more deliberate with your swipes. And I know this sounds goofy, but it's true. Like in the app drawer, it seems you have to wait for this bounce back animation to fully complete before you can swipe out of the drawer. Very interesting and kind of annoying sometimes. Some other minor gripes I have include the auto rotate animation is still pretty choppy, which is weird, and there's still no baked in QR code scanner in the camera app. You have to use Google Lens, which is fine, I guess. So really nothing super major to complain about other than one instance very early on, shortly after the phone was released, where the thing totally freaked out. It got so incredibly glitchy that it was unusable. I wish I caught it on camera, but a simple reboot did the trick and it hasn't happened since, so that's good. Overall performance has been excellent in my use, I don't really have any complaints here either. Uh, call quality and connectivity all work as they should, so all the phone functionalities are solid. Um, as far as daily tasks, gaming, and even heavy power user type usage go, you're looking at flagship level performance. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip has proven to be great, although benchmark heads, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there is some underclocking going on here. What does that mean? Well, for like 98% of us, nothing at all. Let's just say this, the results that this 8 Gen 2 gets you won't be the exact same results you get from other 8 Gen 2 touting devices, but don't let that turn you away unless you genuinely care about your precious benchmarks and throttling tests that much. Either way, performance is top tier. The most impressive thing here though, to me, has been battery life. Thanks to this processor, in my use, the OnePlus 11 has a two-day battery. Not just 8 a.m. on a Monday to 10 p.m. on Tuesday. I'm talking a full 48, or at least close to it. 
I'm talking 8 a.m. on a Monday to 8 a.m. on Wednesday, all on a single charge. Now, full disclosure, this is on very light, casual use. Messaging, emailing, streaming YouTube and Spotify, scrolling social media, very light gaming, very few short phone calls, things like that. But I still get a day and a half with heavier use involving lots of GPS and Bluetooth usage, longer phone calls, etc. Your mileage may vary, and everyone's use is different. But it's definitely safe. To, safe? <laughs> it's definitely safe to say. But it's definitely safe to say that this phone has excellent battery life. Also, charging this thing has been awesome too. Being able to go from zero to 100% in half an hour is easily one of the best things about this phone. It can actually change how you approach your daily workflow when it comes to getting ready to go out, running errands, and traveling. And the necessary charger is included in the box. What a concept. <laughs> Paired with a great battery life and you're looking at a duo that gives Jordan and Pippin a run for their money. These two attributes help negate the effect of not having wireless charging. Now, Personally, I've never looked at wireless charging as a necessity in my workflow, but you can't argue the level of convenience that it brings and that it should be implemented at this price point to at least give users the option. There are plenty of phones in this price range and even less that have it. Oh well, like I said, the stellar battery performance and blazing fast charging make up for it nicely, but they just don't justify the exclusion. When it comes to the cameras, I was pleasantly surprised, mostly because I set my expectations pretty low, but it was clear to see that they were good and had gotten better. By how much though? Well, with further testing, it was easy to see the flaws the cameras had, from inconsistent colors between the lenses, the 1080p cap on front-facing video, and unimpressive zoom results, to over-processing and overexposing photos sometimes, and mediocre low-light results. The cameras aren't bad by any means, they're actually really good, especially for basic point-and-shoot photos. They come out sharp, detailed, and colorful with good dynamic range, but when you start comparing and zeroing in on some of the other intangibles, you quickly begin to see where they fall off and could stand to improve. If you take a lot of photos, I can't just outright recommend you stay away from this phone. The cameras will be great for most people, but if you're super picky, there are other, better options out there. With the Google Pixel series, and I guess with sub thousand dollar priced phones in general, we talk a lot about getting the basics done, the essentials, checking all the boxes that need to be checked, like nice screen, good performance, good cameras, good solid build, and good battery life. Well, that's what the OnePlus 11 does. It checks those boxes, and in some of those categories, it exceeds the standard. At 699, it's not breaking the bank like the S23 Ultra, but it is in a competitive space with phones like the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro and the base S23s. There aren't any carrier deals, but you can grab it from OnePlus directly and major retailers like Amazon and Best Buy, where you can find it on sale at 549 and 599 for the different models as of this video. It's at that point where this phone should become very hard to ignore. I've really enjoyed my time with the OnePlus 11. I could easily use this as my daily driver indefinitely if I wasn't a reviewer. Take that for what you will. And I think it stinks that this phone will be overlooked and underappreciated because of OnePlus choices not being to the fan base's liking. Yes, okay, yes, <laughs> what the heck? Yes, OnePlus has been on a trajectory that the majority of the fan base has been completely soured on over the past couple of years. But let me tell you, with this phone right here, while they're not entirely back just yet, OnePlus is moving in the right direction. At 600 bucks, it's going to be hard to find something that can pull off exactly what this phone can pull off. Yeah, it's missing things even less expensive phones proudly boast. And objectively, it may not be the better option than say the Pixel 7 Pro for example. It's not a perfect phone, nor is it necessarily the best in this price bracket either. But in my opinion, with what this phone can do, it is absolutely worth a look if you're in the market for a fast, powerful phone that's cost effective and will last you a long time. If you made it to this point of the video, you are awesome. Go ahead and drop the green dot emoji in the comments and drop the potato emoji if you're part of the potato gang. Don't forget to check out this awesome Bluetooth speaker from Sound Dynamic, first link in the description, and let me know what you think of the OnePlus 11 and the current state of OnePlus. It's been Zach, hope you enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching.